In New Amsterdam Season 5 Episode 11, Helen Sharp abruptly made a trip back to New York, and Max, together with Bloom, Dr. Wilder, and Iggy, fled to the forest for a business retreat. Fun quickly transforms into a life-threatening calamity. Reynolds consents to undertake a dangerous surgery on the little kid, only to encounter unforeseen difficulties that were beyond his control. Elizabeth and Max are yearning for some alone time at the beginning of the episode, but they are unable to locate any areas in the busy hospital. Iggy treats his rekindled courtship with his now ex-husband as though the two are complete strangers and have never met before in an effort to start over. Martin is initially hesitant and thinks he can't keep playing make-believe, but he quickly realizes Iggy's strategy, and the two go on another first date. The two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment with a Hudson view was what Bloom was looking for at the beginning of the episode. With a pool and a garden of vegetables. But Bloom and Casey are delayed by an unfavorable medical emergency, while en route to her potential dream home via ambulance. Bloom ultimately loses out on the Hudson River apartment. She does, however, stumble onto a rundown penthouse that Casey refers to as Black Hole Chic. Although it requires a lot of labor, Bloom is determined to complete the renovations on her own. Gabrielle, a traveling nurse, is getting close to leaving her job in New Amsterdam to take up a new position all the way in Tanzania. She asks Reynolds for a job recommendation despite the fact that it is obvious they have a unique connection. A brief diversion is a challenging scenario that necessitates returning and undoing a transplant. But at the episode's conclusion, Reynolds is forced to admit his genuine sentiments. Max is thrilled to share the news that New Amsterdam's collaboration with Ithaca Pharmaceuticals has produced a groundbreaking treatment for bulky large cell lymphoma, as he is a cancer survivor himself. However, shortly after his joy, Wilder informs him that the revolutionary clinical trial is a fraud. It turns out that 89% of the study participants were white, and a diverse group of people was not used to test the treatment. The distraught Max and Wilder investigate the problem and learn that Sharp authorized the flawed trial while serving as the department head of oncology at New Amsterdam. Wilder discovers that Sharp approved the medicine in the belief that it might prolong Max's life while he was battling cancer. Both Wilder and Max concur that they wouldn't reciprocate for one another because it would be unethical. However, Sharp's efforts are obviously moving them. Finally, they brought in the trial on lymphadrill to examine other racial and ethnic groups. The very last episode of New Amsterdam began with an unexpected revelation. Max was leaving the hospital to work for the World Health Organization in Geneva, Switzerland. In the final scene of the show, New Amsterdam's new medical director addressed her staff and revealed that she is Luna, who will be all grown up and in charge, and will be portrayed by Molly Griggs in the future. This must mean that his plan to spend more time with his daughter Luna worked out. Max, however, is determined to bring Luna to the yearly Manhattan Mermaid Parade before he permanently departs New York City. When he is called in to assist a patient with an extremely uncommon and potentially fatal condition, his day off is abruptly ruined. Soon after, he directs a group of 53 medical professionals, including Dr. Kashin Shin, in an extremely risky treatment that ultimately saves her life. An enthusiastic young woman is introduced to us as the hospital's new medical director. She arrives at New Amsterdam after a run and introduces herself. Despite the staff's cold greeting, she actively makes an effort to adjust to her new role throughout the entire episode. Vanessa, Bloom's estranged sister, had almost died from a drug overdose the last time we saw her. The next time Bloom would be willing to see Vanessa would be at a NA meeting, a distraught Bloom decided it was time to put some distance between them. She sent Vanessa a message through Reynolds. After some time has passed, Vanessa finally arrives to a meeting exactly as Bloom had intended. Holding hands, it appears like the two are now taking steps to mend their relationship. Reynolds now has the kind of family he always desired. Reynolds has only desired love and a complete, content family since season one. And it appears that he has at last understood this as we show him enjoying a happy dinner with his family, which includes not only Gabrielle, but also his father, Horace, who struggled with his bipolar diagnosis earlier this season. Iggy and Martin remarry in a tiny ceremony conducted by Gladys with just their kids present, despite divorcing earlier this season. Max hands Wilder the keys to New Amsterdam before departing for Geneva, appointing her as the facility's new medical director. Later, he subtly admits his genuine emotions for her. He tells her, it's time to make Luna the center of my existence. Even if it means putting all the things I cherish behind me. She then nods in agreement and adds, you'll be back, with a knowing smile. You cannot permanently leave this location. 
if I come back, it won't be for this hospital, he said in response. She replies in jest, and what makes you think I'll be waiting for you? Fans of Max and Wilder who were hoping for a more definitive resolution to their romance may be disappointed. Do they still keep in touch or do they part ways for good? As it turns out, Luna is the cheery new medical director we first meet at the start of the episode. Yes, those were scenes from the future, when Luna has taken over the position that her father formerly held. She addresses the staff with a speech on her origins and the reasons she became a doctor, just like Max did. It turned out that the day Max was unable to accompany her to the annual Manhattan Mermaid Parade was the day she had her, how can I help? moment. She remembers, throughout the day, I observed how hard he worked to save one life. And how diligently we all worked together. At that point, I understood that New Amsterdam had not stolen my father from me. My father was given to me by this hospital showed me who I could become and who he was. I came to the realization that I wanted to resemble him on that day. I decided I wanted to become a doctor on this day. In order to get things going, I wanted to start by asking everyone what my father asked his staff every hour of every day. How can I help?